There's a trigger warning before we go further for sexual assault and violence, for those of you who might find it triggering. But I want to draw your attention to the case of the 31-year-old postgraduate doctor who was raped and murdered in Kolkata inside the hospital where she was serving. I'm not getting into the details of the crime because it's gruesome and you can find those details elsewhere, but I want to focus on what happened to this young woman. She was on a 36-hour shift. And when she needed to rest at 2 a.m., there was nowhere else to go except a seminar room inside the hospital that had no CCTV camera. She was found raped and murdered the next day. The police have since arrested an individual who's been charged by th with the crime, who is not even an employee of the hospital. He was some sort of civic volunteer who was given access to every department of this hospital. The resident doctors in West Bengal have since gone on strike demanding accountability, demanding an investigation, punishment, an apology from the West Bengal police, accountability from the chief minister, and safety when they're doing their jobs. The Association of Medical Doctors from across the country have written to the Minister of Health, Mr. J.P. Nadda, and asked him that the bill that was framed, there was a law that was framed in 2019, that punished anybody who assaulted a doctor inside the hospitals and threw on the back burner and never passed that that bill be brought back and in fact implemented. Resident doctors across Delhi, Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Chandigarh, Jammu, Madhya Pradesh, Bengaluru are now joining the protest. But this rape and murder is the latest in a string of attacks that we've had against resident doctors. Now, resident doctors are postgraduate students who are you know, commonly called junior doctors inside hospitals. They are assigned in the emergency room. They are assigned to do the rounds and check on patients within a certain time interval. They assist on surgeries. They work long hours that actually go into days without a break. They're not given adequate breaks. They're not given adequate food. They're not given security. A lot of times when families get upset because the patient doesn't survive, they attack physically the junior doctors. In this case, they're not given proper place to sleep. If they have an hour's break, there's no place where they can shut their eyes. There's one report that came out in 2015 that said 75% of the doctors in India have faced some kind of workplace violence or the other. Another report by the California Institute of Behavioral Neurosciences and Psychology listed out 18 cases of brutal attacks against doctors inside hospitals in India in just 2018 and 19. In 2023, in Saftarjung Hospital in Delhi, there was a junior doctor or a resident doctor who was attacked with a screwdriver by a patient. Repeatedly, resident doctors have protested about the lack of safety that they face while they're working and the inhumane conditions in which they're required to work. And here we are again. Repeatedly, governments, various governments, central and state, give them assurances, but nothing changes. I want to remind you that government hospitals are run with our taxpayer money. They're meant to serve the poor. Government medical colleges and hospitals are also run with our taxpayer money. They're meant to educate and train doctors for the future. Where is all that money going? When the people in these hospitals are not getting adequate care, when the hospitals are cramped and crowded, and the doctors are being assaulted all the time. And then we complain when these doctors go overseas and no longer want to serve in India, or they no longer want to serve in public hospitals. It is not just a fight for the Association of Resident Doctors who are already fighting. It is a fight for all of us to demand better. Because we are already, as a society, paying for free health care that we're not getting. We're only getting death and despair. And if we don't fight now, it's almost as if the COVID pandemic taught us nothing. And we've not realized that our entire health care system needs attention, needs overhaul, and needs our support when we're healthy, not just when we're sick.